but but chicken, they put it at a thousand crystals, and it was 300 before. How is that better? As per usual, when a bunch of statistics come out, I decided to do the math, and it just so turns out they have fixed Zenkai Awakening, and if I wasn't already back to the game, I would be coming back to the game purely off of this news alone. We're gonna talk about that and more. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, if you've been keeping up on the news, you've probably already seen this newsletter where they went over the Zenkai Awakening update. They went over the fact we're finally getting Super Saiyan Trunks Teen Red Zenkai Awaken. A little bit of a not great time to offer a Zenkai Awakening for a red unit. Again, I'm not really sure what their motive is for this, but I guess better late than never, right? Anyways, uh, with that said, there are also some other stuff that we want to talk about here in this video, but the main thing is going to be Zenkai Awakening and why it is so dramatically better now that I don't know why anyone would complain about it. Now, I see a lot of people upset that they've decided to remove the first Zenkai Awakening level that you do get from missions. They remove that completely from missions, meaning that you have to spend to get all 7,000 Zenkai Awakening Z power. But that actually isn't a bad thing, and it isn't a bad thing for any player, let alone, you know, your whales or anything. But free to play players are going to benefit from this update as well by a huge amount. Before this update, each Zenkai Awakening level on a unit that came out in this way, not, you know, your Legends Road Zenkai Awakenings, obviously those work much differently, and technically have no Chrono Crystal value, even though you can buy them to speed up the grind. You can grind every single one out, and it's very reasonable to do so by the end of each event. But with that said, the ones that come out specifically you have to pay for no matter what, had an approximate value of 3,000 crystals for each level. A little bit more than that, actually. This is because if you do the math, for each 300 crystals you spent, you got approximately 91 Z power, okay? A little bit more than that on average, but you could obviously get more than that if you got really, really lucky as far as the 70 drops and 30 drops are concerned, but over time, you would average out to 91.5. Now, to properly compare these two, you're going to need to then divide it by three to get a 100 crystal spent average of 30.5 Awakening Z power. Now, moving on to the other side, we have a huge, huge change. Now, it's going to cost a thousand crystals for a consecutive. That's a lot more. And I see a lot of people upset about that, but you should not be upset about that. Do not be upset about that. This is a really, really, really good change, and I'm about to tell you why. Now, let's play Devil's Advocate. Worst case scenario, you have the worst luck humanly possible. You are going to roll that 70 drop every single time for every consecutive you do. Now, this is so far into the realm of impossible statistics, okay, that you are never, ever going to experience this. It is just simply not possible as far as insignificance is concerned for you to have to experience a 70 drop for every single consecutive summon, 10 summons in a row. That is just not going to be possible from a statistics point of view. But let's say that that happened, okay? Let's say that you are the one in however many trillion, quadrillion, whatever it is, that gets that drop every single time for 10 summons in a row. Then you are going to be spending a maximum of 10,000 crystals to max Zenkai Awaken one unit. But wait a second, that's just over half of what you'd need to spend to max Zenkai Awaken a unit before these changes. And it is statistically impossible to be that unlucky. When you do the actual math to figure out the average you're going to be getting for every 100 crystals spent, this is going to assume that you're only summoning consecutives because you get an additional 100 Awakening Z power for every consecutive that you summon on, you're going to be getting an average of 104 Z awakening power for every 100 crystals spent. They over tripled the amount of Z power you're going to be getting for every 100 crystals spent. That is ridiculous. This means if you average out completely, it's going to cost you roughly 7,000 crystals to max Zenkai awaken one unit. That is amazing. And checking with the math of exactly how many crystals you can expect to get if you're an average player that logs in and gets all of their bonuses every day, not even taking into account PVP rewards, you're going to have enough after a month as a free to play player to be able to Zenkai awaken fully a single unit and then even have a couple summons after that on whatever banner is out at the time. So yeah, if you look at all of the statistics, you look at everything from a step back, not looking at the exact numbers that they're putting everything for, but the statistics as they average out, you're going to be spending so much less to have a max Zenkai Awakened team or a max Zenkai Awakened unit. You could have a three member core of a team that includes a Legends Road unit or a Rising Battle unit eventually. I'm sure they'll get some Zenkai Awakenings as well and you're not going to be spending nearly the same amount on it. It's not nearly as price prohibitive as it used to be. This is a good change. Please 
please take the average statistic into account when you're talking about this because I see a lot of people that are saying, oh, well, it was tripled in price. It was over tripled in price. You have to pay 700 more crystals for a single consecutive. That is so bad. They're being greedy right now. No, they're not. They are not being greedy. They have under one third of the price this particular part of the game. That is really good, guys. Really, really good. There is something to be said for removing the first awakening level, and I get that people are upset about that, and it makes sense, but I still think, despite that, that this is such a positive change for the game for any player that it is a worthy exchange, more so than a worthy exchange. It is an over-the-top positive exchange for any player that's playing this game. Now, as far as the 1500 Awakening Z Power and the 500 Awakening Z Power drops are concerned, 0.25 and 0.1% chance are very, very, very low. You probably aren't going to run into them very often when you're Zenkai Awakening units. Most likely, you'll average out at the 170, which will mean that your average is going to be a little bit less. But occasionally, you're going to be going into these summons, and you'll just so happen to run into one of those, and it's going to dramatically reduce the amount of cost in maxing out that particular unit. So now we have established this is going to be a good thing for the new player that's just getting started because they're going to be spending much, much less to have a battle ready ready over the top powerful unit once they can get them to seven stars and since we have multi z power we're going to be able to totally invest into one particular unit which is going to be very very good for your average new player for your mid tier player that spends a little bit here and there this is an astronomically good update because they're going to be able to get a fully zenkai awakened team for a fraction of the cost usually be over 60,000 crystals if you wanted to get a three member team that's fully zenkai awakened now it costs under a third of that that is ridiculous, guys. For whales, obviously, they were going to spend some Mag Zenkai Awaken units anyways. I don't think it matters too much, but spending less is always going to be a good thing, right? And this is arguably the best for free-to-play players because you're not going to have to even spend all of the crystals you get in one single month by playing the game. Again, not including PvP rewards, which just add another 1,000 or 2,000 depending on the season to get a single maxed Zenkai Awakened unit. That is awesome. The barrier to entry to get a maximum Zenkai Awakened unit has totally been decimated with this update, and that is an objectively positive change. Now let's go ahead and cover the other stuff in this post. Now, unfortunately, any currently Zenkai Awakenable units before this particular update are not going to be retroactively changed to the new system until November, which is kind of a bummer because I was planning on sort of maxing out my cooler for a video. And I didn't know that this would be changing. And I literally got him to the third level just a couple days ago. So I would not have done that if I would have known this was coming. And I'm not going to be maxing him out at this point until November. Kind of a bummer, but you know what? It is what it is. It's a very positive change overall. I'm very happy about it. We are also going to be getting Super Saiyan Teen Trunks Red finally updated to the current day. He has 146,000 as his offensive stats, guys. Maxed out 14 stars. That is embarrassing, man. So this is well overdue. Now, a couple things worth mentioning here. Obviously, this is gonna bring him up to the current day as far as stats are concerned. I'd imagine his Zenkai Awakened buffs are going to be absolutely massive, and I can't wait to see them. I'm actually more excited for this Zenkai Awakening than I have been for pretty much any other one in the game other than Cooler, so pretty exciting stuff. With that said, they also mentioned that he'll gain additional defensive capabilities as well as offensive bonuses against LOE and Frieza Force. We'll get to that in a minute. I, I think that there might be some hints here. Zenkai souls are also going to be dramatically easier to get. You're gonna be able to trade Z metals or rising souls for them in the future, which is amazing. Again, very, very positive change because getting dual coins to spend on them is a little annoying and it feels like you're not getting nearly the value out of them that you would like to. There's also a whole bunch of just quality of life changes here, as you guys can see. Assistobot's gonna have a nice notification sent every time you can claim. So, you know, maybe people will wanna spend on getting those $8 a month really isn't too bad for the amount of crystals you get. It's actually better than any other deal in the game. It's just because you can't get them immediately that people tend to not get the uh, exchange Assistobot, whatever. Uh, anyways, so that's pretty decent. And on top of that, you're also going to have notifications for adventures. You're going to be able to consecutively run the same job request and uh, maybe just click a button and then immediately run back into it, which is actually a very positive change as well. I'm really happy about that. Save some time when you're going ahead and doing adventures, which, you know, adventures really aren't that big of a deal to set up right now. But all in all, it's nice to be able to do things that are a little bit tedious like that much quicker than you already could. And this is a sort of automatic thing. So I'm pretty happy about that. 
and then connections various screens are also going to be updated to be faster as well which just is a nice change hey look it's another non-announcement as far as pvp is concerned because things are broken and they really can't fix it without fundamentally changing the way that ratings matches work big old shock there right on a more honest note i obviously think that they're trying to fix this issue and i obviously think it's a very difficult issue to fix dedicated servers are going to cost a lot of money i'm sure and they're not really the end-all be-all solution because then you run into connection issues from person to hub instead of person to person peer to peer so i don't know if there's necessarily an end-all be-all solution to this and obviously they're you know trying to optimize battle exchange data which is something that they've mentioned you know by name in this particular announcement and matching logistics in mid to long term approach so i don't know exactly what this means as far as the actual specifics are concerned but hopefully that means they're getting closer to a fix We'll have to see. And then to add on to the point I made about multi Z power before, they're expanding on multi Z powers obtainable from events by setting one to three stars and four to six star upper limits. They also mentioned the Legends Limited multi Z power again, which means that it's definitely, you know, in the forefront of their minds. They're trying to figure out the best way to put that into the game, how it's going to be restricted, how much it's going to cost. It's kind of a difficult discussion to have because obviously this game needs to make a significant amount of money to continue going, to be continually developed, to pay all the developers, to pay the company. I think that that's kind of a given at this point and legends limited legendary finish units are going to be some of the biggest earners in the game so making it so you only have to pull one of them and then you can get a significant amount of multi z power to power that up may not be what they're looking to do but then again what about the older legends limited units you don't necessarily want to make them extremely easy to get but at the same time you want to make it so people can really dedicate themselves to buffing those characters and getting a team you know up to par as far as the current day is concerned and with that said obviously they want to figure out a solution to that so i think that they're probably trying to figure that out right now i don't know if it's going to be some sort of thing given with consecutives as a freebie bonus we'll have to see but i'm hopeful that it's going to be added as a freebie bonus to just your normal legends banners that you're going to get and uh, maybe they'll have like flashback banners and they'll give older legends limited characters with that freebie bonus so once you do pull them you can go ahead and power them up a significant amount make them sort of meta relevant to the day by getting them to a decent limit break. Just an idea. And finally, the second anniversary events are still ongoing soon in events similar to last year's popular celebratory sizzling summer bootcamp where you got the Ginyu Force where you can get new extreme characters before they appear in the summons is set to go live. Who will rise to the task to defend Earth? I'm just gonna throw out there that if we got some lineage of evil or Frieza Force units from this in particular, and then, you know, the buff unit would obviously be Zenkai Trunks, I'd be pretty happy with that. I'm just going to throw that out there just in case anyone from Bandai happens to be watching. There's also a survey coming out pretty soon that we're going to be able to answer. I'd imagine it's going to be super productive, a super constructive criticism there, and definitely not a whole bunch of angry people that have played the game for a long time and feel like they were absolutely screwed out of a proper second anniversary. That definitely will not happen. But yeah, guys, that's going to be about it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. As always, let me know down in the comment section below what do you think of this newsletter? What do you think of the changes to Zenkai Awakening. I think that it's phenomenal. I'm so excited about it. A little bit less excited for Trunks considering the timing. Maybe if he came out a little bit farther in the future of the game, I'd be a little bit more excited about it, but we'll have to see. I will see you in the next one. Till then, guys, have a fantastic day. Peace.